Oh my. All right, boys, here we go. This thing is driving like crap. Do you guys hear that? What's up, guys, and welcome back to the channel. So if you've been here before, thanks for tuning in to yet another video. And if you're new here, welcome. Please get down there and hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. And while you're down there, make sure you hit the little bell icon so you get notified every time I post a new video. So. As a lot of you have heard me say in a lot of the previous videos, this car is down. As much as I miss all the comforts that this car has to offer and how smooth it is on the road, I actually have been enjoying driving the Subaru everywhere right now, but I think it's time to see what the heck is wrong with this car. I've actually been putting it off for almost two months now, and if I'm being completely honest with you guys, it's taking a lot out of me right now to put in the effort to find out what's actually wrong with it. Today I'm gonna start off with scanning it, getting some information on it, doing a few tests on it, and if I don't get anywhere today, it's gonna roll into tomorrow. Because like I said, this isn't necessarily fun work. Comment down below if you're just like me, but I am always excited and eager to do work on cars when it's like a performance mod or something that's gonna make the car better. But when it's like fixing the car because it's down and diagnosing I just I don't like doing that man how I've missed being in this seat but I'm gonna go ahead and start it up and show you guys what it's doing look at the shifter it is misfiring like crazy Look at the engine just shaking there. I don't know if the camera's picking up all the vibration and noise that this thing is making, but it does not sound good or look good. The weird part is it idles weird, like very rough, but after about, oh, come on, come on, girl. So after, after 3000 RPMs, everything is like normal and that's not just at a standstill that's like basically when i'm driving it too like i brought it home from a city about 30 minutes away from here and i was like crap i have to go through the interstate and when i was in the city getting out of it i couldn't rev the car up that much it was driving like crap so i got on the interstate and when i was on the ramp i had to basically gun it and i noticed that it was running like perfectly fine so that's when i noticed that after 3k it runs perfectly fine below that misfires like crazy all right so i got the scan tool hooked up Let's read the codes on it real quick all right so i had previously erased the check engine light so that's why you can see five monitors are incomplete it does have two codes right now so if we go ahead and read them cylinder six misfire detected and misfire with low fuel so i mean it says 36 miles so empty so we really do need fuel i'm debating if i should take it to my nearest gas station like this just to put fuel in it get the low fuel light off and possibly one of the two codes when i scanned it last time it said misfire on four five and six and it had a random obviously random misfire code right now it's only saying six though so i wonder if i drive it if it'll read more misfires and more cylinders and if the misfire with low fuel will go away so i don't know I think I might risk it and take it that way. Hopefully we make it. I don't know, let's find out. So real quick before we go, I'm over here looking at the fuel trims and the long fuel trim for bank one and for bank two are pretty high and then the short trims are at zero. And when I rev it up, they both go down. See, and then I let it idle, shoot right back up. This leads me to believe that there might be like some sort of vacuum leak. I'm not 100% sure. So we're gonna go ahead and risk it and take it to the gas station, put some gas in it and we'll be back. And I want to try out our new smoke machine that we just built and see if maybe there is a vacuum leak. If that's the only issue, then hopefully it's like some easy hose that I can just replace and we'll be back on the road. Oh my. All right, boys, here we go. This thing is driving like crap. 
Ooh. And the brakes or the rotors have so much rust built up on them from sitting for almost two months that uh, I did not want to brake. Uh, it feels so underpowered right now, which this car has always felt like on some days it has like good power on some days it doesn't but right now like those days that felt like it didn't have any power would feel amazing right now like this thing does not want to pick up all right guys so i just barely made it back if you can hear this motor It's not looking good for us. Oh man, we might need a new motor. Crap. Do you guys hear that? Oh my God. And I just put $12 of gas in it. All for nothing maybe. Crap, man. I'm still gonna go ahead and do all the tests. Like I said, first I wanna start by doing the smoke test to see if it has any vacuum leaks. Um, after that, I guess I'm going to do a compression test because things aren't sounding right. So, oh boy. All right. Well, I need to pull the Subaru out of the garage, pull this one in into the garage, and I guess we'll go from there. All right, guys. The way it was sounding, I'm not going to do the smoke test first. Uh, first, I have hooked up right here the fuel pressure tester. So I'm gonna check for fuel pressure first. Then I'm gonna do. A, I'm gonna jump right to a compression test. Then, if all else fails, I'll do the vacuum test, and then we'll see where we're at, and we'll go from there. All right, so I don't know if I don't have the right adapter for this Schrader valve over here, but when it was on, I saw it reading like around here, which is like around the 50 mark. And while I was doing that, it was like spraying all throughout here. That's why you see that it's all wet here. So that leads me to believe that it was reading around 50 with a leak. So I think the fuel pressure is good. Let's go ahead and do a compression test now. All right guys, so I pulled out all the coils, all the plugs. This is where I need your help. One thing I really don't know how to do is read plugs. They all look basically the same to me. The only thing is they came out looking super white. My heater just turned on, but um, yeah, they all came out looking super white. The only one that really didn't was the number six and that's the one that it was reading a misfire in. This one came out looking super dark and black. I don't know if you guys can really see that, but it's weird because like I said, it's only this one that looks that dark and all the other ones came out pretty much looking just white. This one almost felt like rusty to me. I don't know, it's weird, but let's go ahead and do the compression test. Hopefully the numbers come out good, let's find out.
All right, so cylinder one is reading about one, eh, we're gonna say 160, 165 ish. So let's move on. We're gonna go from one to six because six is the problematic one that we think. So we're gonna save that one for last. About 170. Same as cylinder number one, about 165-ish. About 170 like cylinder number two. About 170. All right guys, let's hope it's not down a hole. About 170, so compression is good. All right guys, so the compression numbers came out good. They are about five pounds in difference from each other. Some were closer to 170, some were around 165-ish. So they're not too bad, they're not that far off. I guess that's a good thing. Uh, right now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna switch the spark plug and coil from cylinder six to cylinder number one and see if the misfire jumps to that cylinder. And other than that, we are gonna do the vacuum leak test with the smoke machine. And then I guess I'll just see what I have to do. But who knows, we might find a vacuum leak that's causing all this. I don't know, let's let's just keep, keep on trucking. All right guys, everything is put back together. Now I'm gonna hook up the smoke machine, see if we find any vacuum leaks. And then if not, my last resort's gonna be to pull all the injectors out and flow test them on the new injector tester that we made. After that, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm all out of ideas. I am gonna be cleaning the mass airflow and the diesel valve and all the stuff that can be cleaned out. I am I am gonna be cleaning all of that out, but I honestly don't think that's what it is anyways. So like I said, we're gonna do the vacuum test right now or vacuum leak test. And then we're gonna end this video. We're gonna come back tomorrow and see what's up with the injectors and see if we can come up with any new plans overnight. All right, so I am seeing a leak from that little, this right here that I'm touching right now, right in there. I see a very big leak every time I turn it on. Look, I'll show you guys. Don't know if that's the cause of everything, but watch this. I'll turn this on. And it starts just flowing out of there. See that? So something is leaking and it's from this hose actually, or it could be from this one. I'm not sure, but I am going to take all of this apart and replace any of the hoses that I can uh, with just regular, you know, normal hose. This one right here feels super brittle. So it might, it might be this one. I guess I'll start taking everything apart and We'll see where we're at. All right guys, so I just checked this under pressure and right there, those bubbles you see there is where it's leaking from. So I think I can get away with just cutting it to that point and putting it back on. I'm gonna try that. I honestly don't think this is what's causing everything, but I'm gonna go ahead and fix this and see, see what happens. All right guys, so I just cut off this bad end on it. It's like about an inch, so. I think we should be good to just throw it back on and it should reach. I mean, it does have a bunch of bends, so a little bit of stretching a bend out. I don't think it'll hurt anything. I did notice right now that I don't have any worm clamps that small, so 
have to go to the store tomorrow because it's late now. Um, I have to go pick that up. So this is where I'm going to end this one. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys have any suggestions as to what could be the issue, please drop them down in the comments down below because I'm not sure that this is going to fix the issue. Tune in to the next video though and that's when we'll throw the line back on or the hose back on and start her up and see if, if maybe that helped. Um, like I said, it seems such a small problem for such a big issue I guess so I'm not sure if that's gonna fix it I guess we'll find out tomorrow and for you guys it'll be the next video so thank you guys for watching make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel and as always keep moving forward and stay on the gas